These prized prehistoric plants come from an ancient lineage that flourished with the dinosaurs about 280 million years ago. So why is a team of experts trying to track them down in the remote wilderness of New South Wales? What the f For tens of thousands of years, Australia's First Nations people have observed, classified and grouped native plant life to foster a deeper understanding and appreciation of our unique flora. Over the last 200 years, botanists have built upon and continued to document and understand Australia's plant life, venturing into remote locations across Australia on field trips. Discovering, recording, collecting specimens to classify and conserve the native flora. In spite of this critical work, numerous native plant species are in decline, with many becoming more and more endangered. One of the most threatened and endangered plant groups are cycads. Cycads probably would have been one of the most abundant plant groups found in forests and in areas around that Cretaceous and Jurassic period. But today, cycad populations have been dwindling and cycads are the most at risk organism on the planet with more than 62% of cycads being endangered with extinction. So this means if we don't fight now to try and save cycads, the future generations might never see them. Cycads are dioecious, meaning there are separate male and female plants. So just like humans, they cannot reproduce alone. So a plant either produces a male cone that produces pollen or a female cone which produces the seed and they require beetles to transport these two between each other. The beetles are initially drawn to the scent of the male cones where they get covered in pollen and once a male cone senses a nearby female cone it starts to heat up literally by about 10 degrees but now the male cones are too hot for the beetles covered in pollen, they seek relief on the cooler female cones. And they've done the deed. But just having a male and a female cycad together isn't enough. In fact, only a subset of males or females produce cones in any given year. They're slow growing. Some species can take 20 to 40 years to produce just one cone. Like humans having mating options, Living in large societies is a crucial part of a cycad's life and reproductive success. Without a thriving society, a cycad will die alone. To help save these rare plants, a team of botanists and horticulturists from Botanic Gardens of Sydney, Royal Botanic Gardens Victoria and the Montgomery Botanical Centre in Florida are embarking on a multi-day expedition to remote New South Wales to track down cycad populations and ensure their societies are still breeding. With these types of trips, obviously we're out in quite remote areas and with that comes a lot of risks. So one of the most important jobs is actually packing the vehicles and ensuring we actually have all the equipment that we need out in the field. Although previous field trips and herbarium specimen records provide crucial data, there's no guarantee that the team will find rare cycads. So Scott, give us an idea of where we're going to go. We'll actually walk, walk the trail through here. With any luck, they'll actually be below the ridge line here. From their trip base in Coonabarabran, around six hours from Sydney, the team heads deep into one of New South Wales's most remote national parks, the Warrumbungles. Despite extensive preparation, getting lost and other obstacles can stand in the way of a safe and productive expedition. The risks in this sort of terrain, it's obviously quite rugged, quite hilly, quite precipitous, so we've had a lot of wet weather. There's a lot of loose, loose debris, so it's quite rocky. The other thing is obviously wildlife, those snakes, it's obviously a big thing. Um, hopefully we're expecting to find some health populations. But what is it about cycads that is driving the team to set out on this expedition? During the Jurassic and Cretaceous period, cycads were everywhere, 
making up 20% of all plant life on the planet. As a kid, you see lots of books and movies about dinosaurs, especially Jurassic Park when I was growing up, and you see the cycads in the backgrounds and you associate them with prehistory, prehistoric and dinosaurs. And these, this lineage of plants are still surviving today and they're right here in our own doorstep here in Australia. Referred to as living fossils, they've survived the mass extinction of dinosaurs and many ice ages. Over time, they've evolved to come in all different shapes and sizes. Today, there are around 360 species worldwide, 80 in Australia alone. Australia itself has the highest diversity of cycads of anywhere in the world. Yet despite surviving the last 200 million years, they are in trouble. 60% of cycad species are now endangered and 15 species are extinct. Cycads are one of the most threatened plant groups in, in the world. And the populations are decreasing for a number of reasons and we anticipate they could decrease more. Human-induced threats such as devastating habitat loss, climate change, bushfires and deforestation have them on the brink. Cycads have also become victims of illegal poaching, with some private collectors spending tens of thousands of dollars on rare species. Mate, slow down. Georgie, stand up. <laughs> and what this does is it kills any potential pathogens that we may spread from site to site. With collection trips such as this, preparation is vital. There's a lot of planning that goes into a trip like this, from accessing records of, of previous sightings to creating maps and putting together an itinerary that obviously maximises our chances of actually finding these species out in the wild. Finding cycads is one thing, but heading into the bush into remote locations always poses risks, like getting lost. That's the walk out from this morning. Yep, so that's where you are, they're polymorpha. Um, we are now, we're out. We're here. Yes. The beauty of the modern age is we have all of these records from many years ago, hundreds of years ago, that are accessible at our fingertips, where we can look at previous collections of where other people found cycads in the past, and that will determine how we try and find them now. We need to really do our due diligence and really understand where these plants are being collected because we could spend a lot of our time coming out here and, and find nothing that is a potential. Despite rigorous record keeping and location data, dwindling populations paired with the threats they're up against makes finding cycads really difficult. Sometimes when you're looking for plants, you're not always going to find them and you have to set yourself up for that. But also we know that the organisations we work for we, we have a mission at the end of the day to explore plants and if we don't find plants in an area that's previously collected, that is still important scientific information that we have to bring back and relay and update records. We're really setting out to find these species that we don't know if we, they're going to be here. So it's like this quest and discovery. We can spend days going out there and find nothing at all. Sometimes we'll find exactly what we're looking for, but sometimes you just don't. Just really excited to be here and be able to find this species growing in its natural habitat. Not only is it the thrill of the chase, it's also the thrill of sharing these discoveries with colleagues from over the world. Identifying or seeing a cycad in its natural environment is a phenomenal experience. Meticulously prepped, equipped and armed with extensive knowledge, can the team manage to find these rare plants? And if they do, how will it help save cycads? You've got to watch the next episode to find out.